Deportiva y con Sui. Deportiva y con Sui. La factoría del deporte de este New York para ti es una máquina. Es una máquina. Pensada para ti. Pensada para ti. Número uno en las redes sociales la que compartir. Con informaciones importantes siempre frescas. Y con entrevistas que te ponen de cabeza. Lo mejor del deporte lo encontrarás aquí. Búscale en las redes sociales la que compartir. Suscríbete. Ay sí. Infórmate. Ok. Over the years, I think it's going to be it's going to be very, very cool to play in Yankee Stadium for our players, for our coaches, and for the fans. Just the with the connection with the Yankees. Went in the administration. We're on a call yesterday. We're finalizing the the details to the trips. Um, you know, we're certainly excited to see a lot of Hokies travel up there. I know. My wife and, and our kids are really looking forward to uh, taking this trip, experiencing New York, you know, in this time of year and Christmas time. So very exciting atmosphere in around New York and certainly are uh, looking forward to the challenge of facing Coach Loxie and a uh, you know, very good ground turf team. So with we'll that, we'll for questions. All right, let's jump up and use the mic so uh, they can hear you on Zoom. Obviously, the last week or so has been kind of dominated by uh, COVID surge, uh -huh. particularly in New York. Um, have you guys entered enhanced protocols here? And are there any plans to sort of uh, be more cautious on site in New York and kind of how to, uh, you know, guard against uh, an outbreak uh, on site? Yeah. The Yankees have been doing a, a wonderful staff, a wonderful job keeping our, our medical staff and training staff. Uh, informed about the, the procedures and things that follow when you hit New York. Haven't really done anything uh, more or less here. You know, I don't think uh, Blacksburg, Virginia is even close to a hotbed. So our guys have all been, uh, we've been following the same protocol and procedures we followed, uh, you know, throughout the whole year. So they continue to do a great job of, and, and our team continues to do things right as far as the COVID with the, the masks, when we're the required to wear masks and, and everybody, It's like, it's, it's second nature now before we're trying to get somebody to wear a mask and you had to have the mask police and you had to have guys remind them to wash their hands and stay apart and things like that. But after about two years dealing with this, I think these kids have really just become second nature to them. Jesse, how have you structured some of these pre bowl practices in terms of younger guys getting reps and older guys, like it's kind of forced to with well, the younger guys <laughs> in certain spots, but how, what has that balance been like trying to strike that? Well, it was you know, going into it before everything, you know, you had talked about uh, developing a little bit of a, you know, I guess as a coach, you have, you have two different mindsets. You have, you know, do you do, you structure like a spring practice and you try to get a lot of guys uh, ready for next year, or do you, you know, we, we went about it as a staff thinking that since we are going to have a bunch of young guys already playing that we were going to, You know, I want the things backed off. This is a reward. I didn't want them to be out there for a normal two hour, over two hour practice. That's not what we wanted. Uh, we wanted to make sure that these guys enjoy the bowl experience. It is a reward. So we, we basically cut things down. We, we had limited individual time, but we got, but I also expressed to them there's a certain amount of work you need to put in to win the game. And we have done that. The, the inside drills, we've had spirited inside drills, what was live. Uh, we've had, Good on good. We we're hitting our situations, red zone, third down. Uh, we did a two-minute drill, ones against ones, two against twos today. So we're trying to simulate as much as we can, good 11 on 11 as we prepare for the game. JC, I assume you've had a good amount of time to, to watch some film on Maryland. What what stands out about Coach Loxley and, and the team that he has put together and the challenge you're going to face? Um, Well, they present they present issues in all three phases. They have, uh, you know, they've done a great job recruiting. They, they have athletes all over the place. What sticks out is, uh, you know, I, I recruited some of those young men, especially early stages of their high school careers, that they all went on to uh, actually go into Maryland, not Marshall. But uh, you know, I know, know a couple of those guys, and they're good players. They got good players everywhere. They have good strong backs. You know. The, Running backs are good. The O-lines, you know, they're big, they're powerful. They're a Big Ten team. And, uh, their season resembles ours. Their, their losses, they, they easily could have gone the other way. They could they could easily be an eight or nine win team. So uh, our seasons mirror each other quite a bit, and it's going to be a tough challenge. 
you mentioned that connection with the Yankees. How have you guys kind of covered that with a lot of the players being pretty young when that stuff happened? Well, you know, um, I'm, I'm a Virginia Tech guy, and, and everybody knows this is my school, so I do the history. We've, uh, we've shown videos. We've talked about it. They're aware of it. Uh, they're aware that, uh, you know, I told them before uh, Ben Anderson made a great video. Uh, we watched some highlights from the game and just uh, some, some you know, news reports from when they were here in, in 08. And, and we, we talked about it. We just told them the history. We told them the background. We told them that, you know, people, when, when something happens, you get, you get that person that says, uh, let me know if I can do something. Or you have people that just do something. And to, for, for George Steinbrenner to, and those guys, and not just the money that them and you know, all the players and the organization donated, but for them to donate their time, you know, take time out of their schedule when they could have been anywhere else but Blacksburg, Virginia to play a baseball game. You know, that's why, that's what makes, uh, you know, our final story the Yankees very special. And, what, and hopefully we're going to be able to do something to, uh, to uh, I guess, commemorate that. It's, it's not quite 100% yet, but we got something special coming. Uh, Braxton, very much after the transfer portal uh, at the start of the week. Uh, what were those conversations like? Was that kind of a surprise? I guess he has to play in the game. You guys were more comfortable with that. Um, you know, could you take us into why not let him nah. not have a chance? Or? Nah. I appreciate you bringing it up, but there's people that opt out all over the country, and, and I would rather just uh, I'd rather just talk about the guys who are actually going to play in the game. And then, did you for at quarterback? Did you have to elevate a walk on to take uh, reps of the third team, or you know, as a third quarterback? How are you kind of handling the quarterback reps? We we we've, we've repped two guys in uh, two. yeah. They just uh, just Blumberg and, and Taj have been have taking the ones at two reps, and, and and obviously the third guy is taking some reps. Um, here and there, but we basically rep two guys. And Connor getting the start done? Yes. <clears throat> JC, you, you mentioned guys all over, the, <clears throat> excuse me, all over the country opting out. You and Coach Beamer often said that there was no such thing as, as a bad ball. Do, do you understand thinking that goes into a young man opting out? Uh, like I said, I, I said earlier when the bowl process started that I don't agree with it. So my fondest memories as a player was playing in the Independence Bowl and in, in the Sugar Bowl. I mean, we, you know, we played in the Sugar Bowl my senior year, and, and, and I was a third-round draft pick. And never in my mind it ever crossed for me to start the game. Um, things are a little bit different now. I think with the emphasis they put in the playoff has devalued the bowl system a little bit. I think just because there's so many bowls, I think that devalu devalues the bowl system a little bit. And I understand and I, I respect their decision, but I don't agree with it. And then on the flip side, what kind of opportunity does that create for some of your younger players, particularly guys like Jones and Lofton, a big receiver who haven't had as much run yeah. and now have to step into a front line role? Well, you, you specifically talk about Jones and, and D. Lofton. I mean, y'all watched the Miami game. Right? I mean, those guys stepped up and made huge plays in that when Trey, uh, when Trey ended up going down and, and you know, it's next, next man up and all that. But I've always grown up with the, the sense of, it, of competitive excellence. You know, you have to continue to get ready while you stay ready. You, you don't get ready when the moment comes. And those two guys are a great example of, of two guys who have been continuing to get ready while they waited their turn. They haven't just waited. They've worked while they waited. So when the moment presents itself, it's not too big for them. And, you know, competitive excellence is you make the play when your number's called, no matter if you've had 100, 100 reps in a game or just one. And that's what those two guys have done. And a lot of young guys are going to be in that position. And uh, you're going to see some fresh faces running around out there that haven't played a lot this year, and, and we expect them to uh, perform. Yes. Sort of speaking of that, you have the, obviously the knowledge of the defensive line. You've lost some guys who've out there, some injuries as well. Uh, what do you see in that group in terms of depth and, and some of the younger guys like – yeah, um, you know, Carroll has, you know, Stretch hasn't played a lot during the year. Uh, he's played in a, in a few games, and we wanted to maintain his red shirt. Cole's a guy who's who's played off and on since the Middle Tennessee game. Uh, Cole's been in the rotation and has has taken reps. And this late in the year, I don't consider I don't consider Cole uh, a freshman anymore. You know, he's played enough in in big games, and, and that his experience level at this time of year is not one of a, as a freshman. You know, 
we're trying, you know, with, with the, the red shirt deal, you're trying to maintain some guys' red shirts. And so there's a couple young guys who have played during the year. Uh, you know, C.J. McCray, I would love for C.J. McCray to play. But if we play him one more time, he loses his red shirt, and it's not worth that. So we want to maintain his red shirt. Uh, so it's just that. It, it's either the guys that we're trying to maintain red shirts or guys opting out, you know. Once again, guy, I've said it. There's no asterisks. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna put an asterisk by this bowl after it's done and said Virginia Tech played well and won Maryland today or beat Maryland today despite this or the Hokies lost. You know, despite this, that has nothing to do with it. It's a win or a loss. So we're gonna roll with the guys who want to be here and we prepared. Uh, you know, we're prepared. We will be prepared. And the guys we're gonna play have been coached all year. So it's not especially. I speak specifically for the D line. Uh, you know, we we rotated 12 guys through practice the entire year because we knew that's one position that does uh, – that there is some some chances that people are going to not make to the finish line. So you have to coach everybody, and I think our staff has done that all year, not just the D-line. So I think those young guys, they sit in the meetings, they get walk-through reps, they get – you know, we, we had a young guy's – young gun scrimmage a couple times. So those guys, have, they've heard these calls. And they've executed these calls, so we expect them to do that in the game. Do you know how many guys are right on that red shirt line? No, not top of my head. Travis. Hey, Jason, growing up roughly 35, 40 minutes from College Park, <laughs> did you follow the Maryland program as a kid? Uh, did they recruit you at all? Were you a fan of them? I, I know they had some lean years after Coach Ross left. It really until Coach Green you got there. Yeah, I remember growing up as a kid and, and uh, when Coach Ross was there. And, and I followed him, obviously. I, I think I grew up 45 minutes from there. And, Played, played a couple times in state championship basketball games at Coalfield House and those things that were on Maryland campus at the time. And uh, fond memories of Maryland. They did recruit me. They were in my final three, came down to uh, Virginia Tech, West Virginia, and Maryland. Um, but alas, uh, I chose the, the beauty of Blacksburg that overcame all of them. <laughs> you mentioned repping the, the, the two quarterbacks for the ball. Will Taj play, definitely? You know, we're talking about it, and we would like to. Um, I think it would be really good to get Taj a series or two, but we're going to have to see how the game goes. Uh, you know, we're going there to win the game, and if we think that him playing a series or two is going to help us win the game, we're going to do it. If, if Connor's rolling and the offense is clicking, then I would not want to upset that. So, uh, we, once again, we would like to, but it's all going to depend on how the game goes. What have been, especially since taking over your – what have been your impressions of Taj? <laughs> hmm. Well, it's not just even since I've taken over. It's the whole time you you can't help but but look watch this guy that looks like a defensive end running around there and, and throwing the ball and he, you know he's 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 got he's a really really good young quarterback who's going to have a bright future. Glad he's here. Uh, you know some things I, I've never coached quarterbacks, so I can't speak intelligently on it, but. Um, I know one thing. When he first walked in, I thought the guy was at the end. Yeah, I, I was trying to recruit him the rest of the past year. So he, his athletic ability is, is is off the charts, and he's going to be he's going to be a really good player in the future. Is he excited about possibly making his debut sort of in his hometown? Uh, I'm sure he is. I don't know. I I, haven't, I didn't ask. Him. I haven't talked to him about that. I did, and can't confirm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Coach. Um, you know, looking back throughout Tech's history, they, they've got a pretty decent history when it comes to playing at baseball stadiums. I mean, playing out in Giant Stadium, playing at the Diamondbacks, even <coughs> uh, the Superdome, they played baseball games there, Joe Robbie, and now adding this to the list. Just how neat is it to add, obviously, another baseball stadium in the bowl list for Virginia Tech? Uh, you know, I guess the, the baseball stadium is, it's, you know, I was a GA when we played out in San Francisco in the Giant Stadium. I don't know if it's really the baseball stadium. I think it's just cool venues, like just things that, you know, to walk in into a stadium that has such history and, you know, whether it's baseball or football, I mean, if you, like if we ever got to play at Soldier Field, that, you know, so I don't think it's necessarily baseball stadiums, but I think it's really neat when you can go into some place and, and you know that there's been, there's been some really great games played in the stadium for what, whatever sport it's been in. And just have the history and nostalgia of Yankee Stadium. I think that's as, as, as neat as anything. Just a reminder if anybody on Zoom has a question, uh, use the raise hand function. We've got one more in the room with Mike. Was, is Not to go back to the opt outs, but in terms of um, guys transferring and entering the NFL that were sort of in between or maybe um, kind of torn about this decision, is it hard when you're sort of 
in between staffs to have those conversations? And do you think that pushed a couple of guys that maybe were on the fence with the NFL to leave? I mean, it, how, how hard has those conversations been the last couple of weeks uh, for you? I, I want to talk about the guys who are here. I mean, I, we had conversations. All, all, all conversations like that are hard. And, I, you know, I, there's so many good players here. I, I'd rather just talk about the guys who are here. All right, uh, Chris Heidel on Zoom. Hey, Coach Price. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I, I'm I'm, from, I'm here in Maryland. Um, uh, what did you uh, – when you got up to Yankee Stadium to practice for the game, um, what are you guys going to do for the field goal kicking? Because I know in baseball, the field in the right field, it's like a jet stream, and every home run goes out like every five minutes because you know, it's like, a, it's like a, a short porch. What do you guys got to do to get ready for the field goal kicking because that wind might be twirling out there in the outfield? Uh, we, we've played the stadiums before, football stadiums that have swirling wind at times. We'll, we'll, we'll go there the day of the uh, day before the game and have a walkthrough and, and, and make sure Romo hits some kicks and, and gets a feel for it. And, but every day, you know, every Saturday is different. So with every stadium you walk into, the wind's going to be different. So it's not going to be new, uh, unique. I think the Yankee Stadium, um, I, uh, thank you for telling me to go to the right field because I don't follow baseball very much, so I didn't know that. But uh, yeah, I think every 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 stadium when you kick in it, especially in this time of year, is going to present some kind of weather challenge, and, and we'll figure it out the night, the, the day before the game, and then the day of. And if I can follow up real quick, uh, being you know with the university from, you know, throughout your career, plus JMU and all that, so what you what are you going to teach your kids for bowl preparation? Because I know you've been in a lot of pro season stuff as a coach and a player. Uh, I'm, I'm, what do you mean? Like, you know, like, you know, preparation, how they, how to, you know, bring your, you know, how to, how to get everybody to group together to win one big game. Because this is like a bigly a big game for you guys. Well, every game is a big game. And when you, you win one, the next game is bigger, then the next game is bigger. So the, the preparation is the same. And that's what we, we may have, we may have shrunk some of the individual work. But the important thing this time of year is the group work. And we've maintained it can maintain the group work aspect going from, seven on sevens to inside to team. I think it's because you haven't played a game in so long. I think it's important that you do some, uh, you know, good against good. We practice ones against our ones and our twos against our twos for the, for the speed aspect of it. Not just, not just scouts. I think that's the important thing. All right. Gene Wong. Yeah. JC, is there a sense from you among the players that maybe there's a, a rivalry among those representing Virginia tech and the Commonwealth against those in Maryland, or is that, not even part of the, the deal for them. Uh, I, I don't think. I don't think the, the, we haven't played in Maryland in so long. I don't know if there's a single guy on the roster that was right. that was even thought of Virginia Tech. But last time we played against Maryland, now there's going to be some guys uh, <laughs> who have a, a little more motivation than others. Uh, certain guys that are from the, the DMV area um, and things like that. But as a team, I don't get a sense of that. I think they they understand the importance of the moment. Uh, everything that they've been through for us to finish the season with a winning record to go seven and six would be huge. And, uh, and that would just, you know, reinforce the fact of how we feel about this team being so mentally resilient. All right. David, last one. JC, I know you don't like, like talk about yourself, but for you to have the opportunity to lead Virginia Tech as the head coach and to one more game, a bowl game at Yankee Stadium. What, what's it going to mean? Uh, I mean it's it's, it's going to be incredible. It means, it means I got a chance to finish with a, a better than 500 record, as, as Coach probably keeps uh, reminding me. Um, <laughs> you know, when it looks back in the, in the, the annals of history, I'm either going to be one and two or two and one, I guess. But uh, that's what Coach probably keeps telling me. <clears throat> it, it's just real exciting. I mean, at this time last year, you know, I was looking for a job. You know, I was out of work. That's how just how crazy this business is. Now I get to sit here and, and talk to you guys and, and leave my alma mater against this, you know, school that I grew up 45 minutes from. And uh, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you, when the, the bowl and the bro, uh, projections were coming out, uh, I was I was really torn about the uh, chance of playing Yankee Stadium with the connection with the Yankees and playing the military bowl. It was also 20 minutes from my house. So I kind of get the best of both worlds that the fact that we get to play in Yankee Stadium and I get to play uh, against a school that I grew up 45 minutes from. So that's uh, really exciting for me. All right, one more, David. JC, you 
you mentioned a year ago, you're looking for work. <laughs> Some of the guys preparing your team now are in the same boat. How, how difficult has it been for them to balance job search while preparing your team? And how impressed have you been by their ability, I would presume, to compartmentalize yeah. and, and help your team? Well, I, I can tell you this. If it's been difficult for them, I would never know. I mean, those guys have gone about their business. They've been professionals. Uh, you know, we've had a guy or two uh, miss a practice for interviews, and that's certainly okay and, and a good thing. They're all good coaches. They will all have another opportunity. Uh, you're in this business. You're going to be in this business long enough. You're going to you're going to be let go at some time. Uh, I was in 17 years before I was finally was let go. So it's going to happen. Whether it happens year two, it's just that's the nature of this business and the uh, the amount of detail and focus those guys have have continued to work with uh, for these kids that they care about to get to the finish line has been absolutely amazing. All right. Thank you, Coach. We've got Terrell Smith uh, leading off our captains here. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Juicy, get in here. <laughs> He's got seven years, Brock. No, I did. Questions for Terrell. Right, New Brunswick, New Jersey, by the way. Oh, New Jersey. Stand up. <laughs> I, don't know, I think you played uh, everywhere on this offensive line in your career here. Are you kind of preparing in a couple different spots for this game just in case, uh, given some of the guys that aren't going to be available? Yeah, uh, Coach, uh, Coach Vice has me and some other guys playing in different positions that we normally don't practice at, at all times. So uh, both tackles for sure. Um, if something were to happen at guards, uh, some other guys, Johnny Jordan, uh, Silas, straight would bounce around. But uh, mainly the two tackle positions are the one that I'll be able to step in at. Um, barring you take another year, what do the uh, final countdown days look like for you? And is there anything that uh, you want to accomplish before you uh, leave Blacksburg and play in your last game? Uh, yeah, these, uh, these last few days, uh, last few weeks, honestly, have been like, it's been happy because we're coming to an end. I'm not happy, but like my time here has come to an end. I had a good time here in Blacksburg. Um, but while we're here, we still have a lot of business to finish. Um, we want to go and win this bowl game. Uh, it started with uh, beating UVA. Uh, we want to continue that uh, path until uh, we beat Maryland uh, up in New York. Hey, Tyrell, did you grow up a Yankee fan at all? And how cool is it going to be for you, I guess, to, to kind of play to your hometown? I think I'm a Yankees fan. Uh, I don't really <laughs> pay attention to baseball too much, but being so close to, to New York, uh, the Yankees were always a team I'd say I root for, but baseball wasn't really ever my thing. You mentioned Coach Vice. How hard has it been for some of the guys that have been with these coaches, you know, the entire time they're here, to keep them here the entire time for Vice? Um, so to see them kind of be in limbo and, and looking for a new job, has that been tough? And, and you talked to them about it. I mean, they probably don't bring it up to you, but how, what's that been like the last couple of weeks? Uh, it's definitely tough uh, because we, like you said, I've seen them since they first got here. We were able to grow together, uh, learn so much from them. So uh, it, it's more than football too. So like, I want to see them end up in a position where they're straight and they have a job to support their families. Uh, so uh, I talked to mainly Coach by some of the other guys, not as much, but uh, just talking to him, make sure after if, um, Coach probably keeps him or not. If he doesn't, uh, just make sure he'll be straight for uh, the future. David. Tyrell, watching Maryland on, on film, what about their defensive line stands out to you? Uh, they're big. They're big up front. Uh, they got 310 and 320 in the middle, um, and their linebackers are like 6'4", 250. So uh, they have size all around. Uh, they move well. So um, we're just going to have to continue to prepare, uh, make sure we're ready for uh, great size and speed, honestly. <clears throat> What have been your impressions of, of Taj, <clears throat> specifically these past few, I guess, week now that Bryce is not there and he's getting reps? Mm -hmm. uh, I like Taj a lot. He has a, a great head on his shoulders. 
Uh, he's all about his business. Uh, every single day he comes in and doesn't really say much. He just works. So um, I know when he gets his numbers called uh, next week or whenever, uh, next Wednesday, uh, he'll be ready to go. JC said he looks like a defensive end, does he? He's huge. Like, if he lined up out there, he'll probably uh, hold his own. So uh, he's, he's a pretty good kid, but uh, his, his arm and his head is in a pretty good spot. What have, been, what have the preparations been like? So many people who were here during the regular season, either copying out or transfer or hurt. I mean, it's a much different roster as you guys prepare for that. Yeah, it's definitely different, but uh, – a way we kind of just do things is the next man up. Uh, everybody prepares as if they're going to take uh, 100 snaps a game. But um, sometimes, obviously, that doesn't happen. So when things like this happen, uh, you just got to be ready to step into that that role. All right, anybody on Zoom for uh, Terrell Smith? Going once, going twice. All right, Juicy, you're off the hook, sir. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it, Thank Joe. you. Thanks, Chief. Come on, Brock. Got center Brock Hoffman. Uh, Brock, a couple of your teammates uh, made a decision to opt out. You decided to play uh, in this game, then go to the draft. What was that decision like? And who did you talk to about that whole process? Talking about on playing or going to the draft? Uh, on playing. On playing. I mean, for me, it was no. There was no decision. Uh, I've never played in a bowl game. So this is my first one, um, and like it was just an easy decision. There was no way I wasn't going to play. What about with the draft? What, what went into that? Uh, uh, for process? me, I just thought it was, you know, my time to move on. Um, I talked to a lot of people here and um, I talked to people in my family and I just felt like it was the right time for me to move on. What, what's it going to mean for you to, to play in one final collegiate game to play with all these guys that you've been around for two years now? Yeah, I don't mean the world to me. Uh, I just want to go out on a high note. Um, and just, you know, just all the work and all the ups and downs we've been through throughout, throughout this whole year, uh, we just need to finish on a win. What, I don't know if you've ever been to New York or Yankee Stadium, but how, how excited are you for the trip and to be able to, to play in Yankee Stadium after everything the Yankees did for Virginia Tech back in 2007, 2008? What's that going to mean for you? Yeah, it'll, it'll mean a lot. Um, you know, I'm very excited because I haven't been to New York and I haven't been to Yankee Stadium, so it'll be cool to play in there. And uh, I thought Coach Price did a good job of, you know, kind of explaining the history about Virginia Tech and uh, the Yankees. He uh, played a video for us and talked about, you know, the baseball game that they played and stuff. And, um, you know, there has been history between us, and it's cool to go up there and uh, play on their field. I know Coach Weiss has been kind of a, a mentor to you since you've been here. Mm -hmm. how, how tough is it to see him in limbo? And are those conversations you have with him? I mean, just because I know he's probably not bringing it up, but do you try to be there for him? I mean, what's that been like the last couple of weeks where, you know, some of these coaches are, are – <coughs> Kind of half in and half out trying to figure out what their next step is. Yeah, no, I mean, we haven't really talked about it like one on one and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, the, obviously, you're right, he is in limbo. But right now, like, the goal is just to go out and win it. All right. Anybody on Zoom for Brock Hoffman? All right, Brock. Mm -hmm. Appreciate y'all. All right. Thanks, sir. Good luck. All right, we've got uh, defensive back Shamara Connor with us. Right, when you look at this matchup and, and how much they passed the ball and the success they've had, uh, how much challenging is this as a defensive back and how much pass coverage do you anticipate in a game like this? Uh, you know, it's definitely going to be a challenge, a challenge with all the passing, but, you know, as defensive back, that's what we look forward to. So I'm excited to, you know, play against that. A lot of the guys uh, in kind of your situation have announced what they're doing for next year. Have you made a decision uh, to enter the draft or come back? And what was kind of your thought process and all that? Uh, I still haven't really made a decision yet. I've been uh, trying to get ready for this bowl game, but I've been thinking about it a lot, but I still haven't came up on like, what I want to do for sure. Who are you leaning on throughout that process? And is, is it a hard, I mean, it's obviously a life altering decision. Is, is, has it been hard? Uh, yeah, it's definitely been hard. You know, mostly just leaning on my mom, my parents, you know, asking them for their feedback. But 
I still haven't came up with the decision yet. So you could still envision coming back then uh, for another yeah, year? It's a possibility. Yes, Have you spent much time with Coach Fry? Uh, we talked a few times. And what are your impressions? Uh, I like him. I think he's a good coach. We haven't really been able to talk too much, though. Yeah. Because man, get ready for football. Sure. Jamar, for a lot of these guys, it's it's their last game in college. How excited are you to, to play with a bunch of these guys? And if it does end up being your, your last college game, you know, to be able to play in, in New York, in Yankee Stadium, after everything the, the organization did for Virginia Tech and University back in 2017, I mean, how much is that going to mean to you? Uh, you know, it means a lot. You know, I'm ready to, I'm excited to get out on the field with the guys, you know, just being in New York with the team, buying it. Well, it might be our last time together, you never know, so I'm just excited for that. Jamar, is, I mean, is there much carryover? Just, it's, it's been a while, but the enthusiasm and the energy that you all drew from beating UVA to become bowl eligible, does that carry over as you guys prepare for Maryland? Uh, yes, sir, it definitely carries over, you know. We were excited to be able to come to the bowl. So, you know, we just got to keep that going instead of, you know, going down after we made it to where we wanted to be. All right. Anybody else in here for Chamari? Anybody on Zoom? We've got Chamari Connor available. All right. Very good. We're still waiting on Dax Hollifield to finish up his lift. Stand by. They put a lot of hard work into this program. Um, I want to send them out the right way. Um, the Yankee, uh, the Yankees, the playing Yankee Stadium is pretty cool. Um, it's a really historical place, and he's playing on a baseball field like that in you know, the Bronx. It's gonna be really, really cool. Um, but it really don't matter. I just want to get a dub. To be completely honest, so yeah. What What have been your impressions with with Coach Pry and, and Marv and so far? And um, he's obviously a linebackers guy. Mm -hmm. How much is that? In high um, being a defensive guy, linebacker, I mean, it's a, I think it's a great place, great opportunity for us. Um, really trying to talk a lot of the guys that have another year of eligibility on the defense side of the ball to stay. I mean, I feel like it's a perfect opportunity for us to get better. Um, I mean, a head coach is a linebacker, linebacker coach. So, I mean, it's a perfect opportunity for me and Allen and um, just in our room. So, I'm excited for them to come in and bring some young staff. They can recruit, so I know we're going to have – some good talent coming in. Uh, I'm so excited for that. I'm sorry where this program's headed. Um, Dax, you've made it clear that you're staying. You know, yeah. you want to be at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. Have any of uh, your teammates who have been kind of on the fence, whether to stay or leave, have they come to you and kind of picked your brain a little bit about why you've been so passionate about staying? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to stay because I want to get better. I mean, that's why I came here, to just get better at football. Um, I think people take going to the league for granted. Um, if you have another you have an opportunity to get better, I think you need to take that because just this this game this game doesn't last forever for you. And my dad, he's talking to him. If he could do whatever he can, if he had another year of eligibility, he would do it in a heartbeat. And just a lot of guys, looking back, I'd say they will probably do it over again. Right now in the grind, most people are like, man, I want to get out of here, I want to get paid. But when you're in the thick of it, like when you just need to look back on it and be like, yeah, this is I'm here to get better. Just take it one day at a time. But yes, yeah, some guys have gone with me and really, and I'm giving my opinion, 
and I feel like uh, I feel like they're gonna make a, a good good decision. Is there a piece do. of Blacksburg that you feel like is like selling point? Like, come I mean, on, you gotta stay because X Y Z. Uh, Blacksburg, I mean, it's a great town. Like, but like on the defensive side of the ball, he's got talking about Coach Pry. I mean, he's gonna bring some. He's been putting guys in the league, and if you really, if you want to, if the next level is your goal, I feel like this next year is a good opportunity for people like that. So. Thanks. Yeah, Thank you. Been, you've been pretty close with Jack Tyler over mm -hmm. the years. What's that been like preparing for this bowl game with, with he sort of has an uncertain future here in the program? Um, he's my guy. I mean, he came in. He's been here since I've been here. My freshman year, I sort of got thrown into the fire. He really got me ready to play. A lot of extra time in the film room. Um, he really taught me the game at this level. So it's a little emotional. Um, this last game with him, he's my, he's my guy. He's one of my best friends. He's gonna be he's gonna be a good coach one wherever wherever he goes. So I'm excited for him, but we're gonna play our, our hearts out for him. We're gonna leave it all on the field for him. So I'm excited. And just the rest of the coaches too. We love them. Uh, they're great, they're great people and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have a great career after this. Um and in a different place, but we're gonna we're gonna get one for him. So have you talked with those coaches about that? Or you try to avoid that I mean everybody kinda of understands the situation, but um I mean everybody knows. It's it's pretty Pretty obvious, but there is it's it's gonna things gonna shake out. I mean, it changes goods a lot of times, you know. Like even though it might be people might be upset right now, um, people are gonna go different places, people are gonna get opp other opportunities, and they're gonna make the most of it. I, I truly believe that. So I'm excited for them, excited for this program, excited for everything. So Jack says it has it been an unusual old prep not only because of coaches, but some guys are transferring, some guys have opted out of the bowl. Some guys declare for the draft. They're not mm -hmm. going to play, but some are going to play. Just a lot, a lot of different big signals. Yeah. There. Um. Really, if really what this bowl game comes down to, I feel like is the guys who want to play are going to play. The guys who don't want to play don't are not going to play. So we practiced our butts off. I'd say this December. I, I mean, years past, a lot of the a lot of the older guys, we were just running tempos. And, Really just relax to uh, stay, off our, stay off the banging and stuff. But we've gotten after it. I mean, the practices have sort of been shorter, but we have gotten the work in in those practices. I'm excited to go out there and compete. Um, so it's sort, it's sort of been a, a little different of a of, uh, preparation st uh, standpoint, but we got good work in. I'm excited to go out there next week. Jack, being that you're staying, how, how do you feel like these practices and this preparation, I don't know, has maybe helped the team going forward into next season? I mean, a lot of the younger guys, I'm getting to play with a lot of younger guys right now and really just setting the standard for next season. Uh, Co Coach Pry and all and the new staff, they aren't out there. They're, they're out there just watching. They're not coaching. But really just setting the standard of, like, what's the what's the standard? Like, going out there and practicing hard every day, doing what's required. I mean, we went out and practiced on Saturday and Sunday. Nobody would want to do that. But – <clears throat> the work is there. You can still get better. It's just looking. I think Deion Sanders talked about it. Um, he had a really good quote or something like that. He was like, what are you out there for? I mean, we're out there for two hours a day to get better at football. Why not, why not put the most into that? And that's really what I'm trying, my standpoint on it, my viewpoint on it is. I feel like a lot of the other guys are getting that way as well. And then besides the game, is there anything in New York that you're particularly looking forward to? I mean, heck, I heard they got some really good food up there. I'm excited <laughs> about that. So I love some food. What food are you most interested in? Pizza and bagels. I, I like I like pizza a lot. I mean, but bagel I've heard Jersey got some good bagels. We don't really got good bagels down here, but but uh, yeah, I'm excited. All right, anybody on Zoom? Um I have a question for Dax. If not, we will uh, conclude the Virginia Tech portion of the New Era Pinstripe Bowl media session. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Dax. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. Hey, Dax, check out Hello Bagel in Blacksburg. <laughs> I got Hello Bagel. I got Hello Bagel. Hello bagel. I, but I've heard <laughs> Jersey bagels are different. Jersey. So, Jersey. I don't know that. I don't know that. But, hey, uh, <laughs> is in the uh, coach. Sacudelo, sacudelo, la máquina deportiva, que qué, que qué, máquina deportiva, que qué, que qué, máquina deportiva, sacúdelo.